To create a global city and surpass its weight on the world stage, Sri Lanka reclaimed two square kilometers of land from the Indian Ocean. This is how Colombo is going to become one of South Asia's most formidable news centers. Dubai is considered the most luxurious city in the world. With oil money, the Arabs have successfully transformed Dubai from a desert to a city with the tallest skyscraper in the world. The Burj Khalifa stands proudly in Dubai, as the clearest proof that the city is pure luxury. Now China wants to change all that. The Chinese government intends to build a new Dubai, or a luxury city like Dubai. And they have chosen Sri Lanka as their destination. At the moment, the area called Port City is just a line in wasteland going into the ocean. But when all is said and done, the city will have 65 million cubic meters of sand. The goal is to make Port City a place of glass skyscrapers, a vibrant financial district, hotels, a theme park and everything else. Every year approximately 200,000 Sri Lankans, many of whom are highly skilled, leave the country in search of better employment opportunities. Since the end of the civil war in 2009, Sri Lanka has sought to bring jobs and talent back to its capital, sustaining a level of economic growth that will bring it worldwide recognition. Located between the centers of Dubai and Singapore, and within reach of New Delhi, Kuala Lumpur, and Bangkok, Colombo's geographic context offers great potential. But its location on the Sri Lankan coast means that any significant expansion of the city is usually limited to its outskirts, away from the existing economic and cultural center. Of course, there is a way around this. To boost the inner center, the port city of Colombo has reclaimed two square kilometers of land by the sea, after which it will add a vast new area of commercial, residential, and public spaces that should create 80,000 new jobs. The project, financed and co-developed by the Chinese and the local government, is the largest private sector development in Sri Lankan history. Port City is a land reclamation project consisting of five different areas. The Financial District, Central Park, Island Living, Marina and International Island. Of the 269 hectares proposed for reclamation, 173 hectares are designated as market lands. Chinese dredgers and excavators have been working day and night on Colombo's famous waterfront for months, evoking mixed emotions from the thousands of passers-by crowding the waterfront on any given day. After months of delays and disagreements, they set out to reclaim seawater to lay the foundations for a new financial center, expected to rise out of the Indian Ocean, touching the shores of Sri Lanka's trading capital. The new area will have its own economic and commercial laws, making it more attractive to global multinational corporations, and its access to key sea lanes across the Indian Ocean will further enhance its appeal. The five areas of Port City will be combined to form an integrated urban environment of more than 5 million square meters, accommodating approximately 80,000 people as well as 250,000 daily commuters. The master plan for the new district calls for an eco-friendly green metropolis with open spaces, waterways and public spaces and a layout that encourages walking and cycling without heavy automobile traffic. Buildings of different heights will be carefully arranged. While the taller towers will be located closer to the mainland, the buildings will gradually decrease in size as they get closer to the waterfront. Building an entire new district on a site located in the ocean is not an easy task. The process of land reclamation first began in 2014, Initially, about 3 million cubic meters of quarry material, mined within 50 kilometers of the site, and more than 40,000 precast concrete tetrapods were used to build the huge breakwater. The barricade, 20 meters high and 3.2 kilometers long, was built to protect the new area from the unpredictable monsoon climate. Indeed, during construction, the wall was tested. In November 2017, a cyclone hit and damaged parts of the unfinished structure. After the installation of the camp, 65 million cubic meters of materials were extracted from the sea, which were used to create a vast area, on which the port city of Colombo now rises. Reclamation work was completed in 2019, and in December of the same year, the land was officially declared part of Sri Lanka. But there is a problem. While the remediation work is undoubtedly a grandiose engineering feat, it has not been without controversy. Environmental groups have raised concerns about the impact of this scheme on the local environment. And in 2015, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka put the entire project on hold for fear of damaging the coastline. Jude Namal Fernando, a fisherman and trade unionist from Megumbo, north of Colombo, stated that sand excavations along the coast were destroying aquatic life and affecting the livelihoods of approximately 8,000 people who earn their living from fishing. The habitat of various species has been destroyed, and the removal of corals has disrupted the ecological balance. The fishing industry involves many other individuals besides fishermen, and the livelihoods of those on shore and those involved in delivering the catch to the market are also affected. 
The Center for Environmental Justice argued that building a new city would require more natural resources than Sri Lanka could provide. Experts argued that the amount of sand needed would quickly exceed 100 million cubic meters, threatening the fragile marine habitat and the livelihoods of the 15,000 fishermen working in the mining area. The Center for Environmental Justice estimated the cost of the sand at $3.2 billion, which experts say exceeds the $1.4 billion invested in building the city. The environmental group also warned that travel to the new financial district is 300,000 daily car trips, which will lead to a significant increase in air pollution in the city, already exceeding World Health Organization standards. Nevertheless, it took almost a year for the Environmental Impact Assessment to allow the project to resume operations again. Concerns have also been raised about the extent of Chinese involvement in the port city of Colombo. This project is part of the Chinese government's One Belt, One Road initiative, which is a vast infrastructure program dating back to the ancient Silk Road, aimed at better connecting China with the Middle East, Europe, and Africa. While the port city could open up a new route for China to the Indian subcontinent and its fast-growing markets, there is concern that it could lead to a repeat of previous deals between the two countries that did not end well. The $1.3 billion Hambantota port on the south side of the island, which first opened in 2010, was built using loans from Chinese banks, but after severe losses hampered payments, the port was leased to China in 2017 for 99 years. Meanwhile, Batala Rajapaksa International Airport, now called the world's emptiest airport, was also financed by a Chinese loan worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Although it is capable of handling millions of passengers annually, only 1,536 people passed through the airport in 2019. Of course, the developers of the city want their project not to suffer a similar fate. Land reclamation was completed in 2019, so work in the new area is progressing rapidly. The new project of the international financial city of Colombo is already under construction, and the marina has entered the final stages. The first building in the new district is scheduled to open this year. Later, the government and Colombo will begin a joint marketing campaign to promote Colombo's port city opportunities to outside investors. Although Sri Lanka has had its fair share of disappointing developments in recent years, and despite the controversy with the Colombo port city, the project is expected to reach its goal when it is fully completed, giving the country an opportunity for new capital to flow in. The intentions of creating a port city seem noble, and the functioning of this institution is expected to bring great economic benefits to Sri Lanka. But the success of this project will depend on how it is managed. Write in the comments, what do you think about the new port city of Sri Lanka? We would be interested to know your opinion. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Karo Show channel. Also watch our previous videos. Goodbye.